Hello students, welcome back. Let us continue with chapter 14, Statistics. And we'll, uh, after the introduction, we'll take a look at a new topic, Collection of Data. Now for representation purpose, we will talk about an activity and then we will see what follows. So the first thing is an activity where you divide the students of your class in four groups and allot, uh, allot each of the group uh, the task of collecting any of the following kinds of data. So let's say group 1 is supposed to collect the heights of 20 students of your class. Group 2 will collect the number of absentees in each day in your class for a month. Group 3 will uh, find the number of members in the families of each of your class. And group 4 will find the heights of 15 plants in or around your school. So the first activity, collecting the heights of 20 students in your class. What do you think? You're going to ask two questions, whether the information collected by the groups is done uh, through a one-to-one -one interaction personally, or it is collected through some uh, source. It could be the office register or the internet or anything else. In the first case, it's very simple, right? Uh, one group may have like, uh, let's say group one has 10 people. So it's very easy to divide that uh, group into subgroup and just approach these 20 students of your class and just write down their heights. So what is happening here is a one-to-one -one interaction. So I'm just going to mark this with a different colored chalk. Okay. Now moving on to the second one, number of absentees in each day in your class for a month. Now this information, do you think like if you just got the activity in the midst of the month and you have to submit the records by tomorrow, would it be possible for you to approach each and every student and you won't even be certain whether they have taken the leave or not or they taken a holiday or not. So what are you going to do? You're going to take a look at the logbook which maintains the records of all the presentees and absentees of the students throughout the year. So this will come through some source which, is, which could be the register or logbook. So I'm marking this with a yellow colored chalk. So here we have a one-to-one -one interaction personal and here there is a source concerned. Now let's take a look at the third one, number of members in the families of your classmates. Now this situation is a little tricky. It could either be through one-to-one -one interaction or if you have a very enthusiastic team, that is if group three is very enthusiastic, they are subdividing again, they're approaching each and every student and finding the number of families and jotting down um, on a piece of paper, just as a record. Or there could be a smart group. What they could do is they could invest their enthusiasm in uh, thinking that how can the data be extracted very easily. That is, they will approach the office premises somewhere in the office faculty and just ask for the records that are filled at the start of the year in forms where the number of families of each student is written. Of the family members is written, right? So here, it could either be through one-to-one -one interaction or through source depending upon the enthusiasm and smartness of your team. So I'm not underlining this as of now. Now let's move on to the fourth one. Heights of 15 plants in or around your school. Do you think this is possible? There will be like several plants. In my uh, school, I remember there were like huge trees and there were like thousands of plants, a lot of greenery. Believe me, even if there, were, there would have been a group of 20 students, it wouldn't be possible for us to go manually and check the height of each plant. So I would have, or the group would have gone to the gardener and asked for this information. So again, what is happening here is, the students are not going to individually on a one-to-one -one basis going to go and measure the heights of the plant, but they're going to go and collect it from the gardener or caretaker of the garden. So what is happening here is, again, there is source involved. So what is the difference between the ones that I have underlined? When I say that some information or data that is gathered personally, that data is no, known as primary data. Primary data is data collected personally through a one-to-one -one interaction and also directly. Okay, because here no third person is involved. It's just direct. You just go approach the person and it's very direct. It's not indirect. So this is primary data. 
Now what about secondary data? Secondary data is obviously going to be the opposite. Secondary data is nothing but where a third person is involved or it's indirect where the collection of data is indirect. So it will be through some source. So data collected through and already available source. So, sir, source here could be a register or another person or anything else. It could even be the internet. So, this was about collection of data and the two types of data that uh, your data could belong to. It could be either primary or secondary. So, to explain this further, we have exercise 14.1 of your textbooks. This is on page 239. So, let's read out the first question. Give five examples of data that you can collect from your day-to-day -day life. And the second one is classify data in question one as primary or secondary data. So let us just write uh, five simple examples that we come across a day-to-day -day life where we are collecting data. So I'll say one and I'll just write down the different kinds of data. So let's say the number of girls in your class. Okay. The second one could be the number of computers in your school's computer lab. Right. Then third one, let's say the number of sandwiches in your tiffin today. The fourth one, let's say the number of students who passed in the state of Maharashtra in 2015 okay so pass a uh, number of students of 10th grade okay then let's say your parents are looking for a teacher for you so they are just going through the internet and they are trying to find the number of maths tutors in Mumbai. So these are five examples of data that you can collect in your day-to-day -day life. Now we need to classify the data in question one as primary or secondary data. So I'm just going to mark these here itself. That is I'm going to combine question one and two. So question one and two. Okay, let's see the first one. The number of girls in your class. Simple to count, you can just do it personally, directly. So this is going to be what? It's going to be primary data. Now let's just do this exercise randomly. The number of maths tutors in Mumbai. Is it possible for anyone to go directly and find this information? No. It is going to be available either on the internet or newspaper or in the telephone directory. You can just call Just Dial and they can give you this information. So this is through a source. So this data is going to be secondary. Right? Let's take a look at this one. The number of sandwiches in your tiffin today. What you have to do is just open your tiffin. I know the smell is going to just lure you, but do not eat it uh, during class hours. This is going to be primary data because you're going to check this information personally. Right? Okay. The number of computers in your school's computer lab. Again, you just have to go in the computer lab. There aren't many labs. There's just one computer lab in the schools. Usually just one if uh, there's a primary and secondary. So if you're in the primary section, you can go to the primary section or you, if you're in the secondary section, you can go to the computer lab of the secondary section and just count the number of computer uh, the computers in the lab. There are minimum of like 
15 to 20, not more than that, I'm assuming. So this is going to be, again, primary. Now, there's another one remaining. The number of students of 10th grade who passed in the state of Maharashtra in 2015. Is it possible for you to, you can obviously say about, you know, the number of students in your school or in your class, but for the state of Maharashtra, it's a huge state. Have you seen it on the map? It's very difficult to find the number of students. So you're going to get this information either through the previous year's newspaper or through the internet. So this is again collected through source. So it's going to be, of course, secondary. So I'll say secondary. So secondary, secondary and three primary, okay. So this was about exercise 4.1 and I hope your concept about collection of data is now clear. Thank you for watching this video. Hope this video increased your knowledge. For more such videos and a completely free educational content, log on to www.epathshala.org or visit our epathshala YouTube channel. We have each and every question solved for maths, physics, chemistry and biology. So subscribe our channel, share with your friends, like our Facebook page and follow our Twitter handle for regular updates and important educational tips and also win epathshala goodies. So what are you waiting for? Subscribe this channel and enjoy the freedom of education.